Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Jas and welcome to Wordies. And today we are talking about the FRM November 2025 exam analysis. Now I have listed out certain takeaways that you can actually use it for the 2026. So before I begin with the November 2025 exam analysis, I have two things here that I want to discuss. Now, very first thing is that there was some technical issues that was reported by a few students especially for part two they were not able to either take their exam due to some technical error well this is something that is not in our control right and i'm sure garp might have provided the resolution for this uh so this is something that still it is not uh, not in our control i know i can understand there was some technical issues but the reason i brought this particular point is there is something that is still under our control and that is the registration issues now now what do i mean by this i'll give you one very simple example let's suppose that in your garp you know when you entered your details you entered the name as thomas right so this is just a simple example that i'm just illustrating here so in the garp portal or the dashboard you have your name as thomas in your document let's suppose you have submitted passport you have your first name as Thomas as well. Uh, so it both matches the name on the ID as well as the car dashboard. Good to go, right? But here, this particular thing happened that when the PSI, when they send you that email, uh, the admission ticket, right, that you need to print and show it up on the exam, there we have a different name which is let's say Thomas. Now, it's just with a little extra S that you see here. So this was pretty much extra. Now, obviously, some candidates, they did not see this particular thing. Now, what you mentioned here and here does not match with this particular name. And hence, the reason I brought this is because my student made this mistake and the candidate was not allowed to sit on the exam. So guys, my point is very simple. Something that is still under our control, why can't we just match the details, right? That is just the key takeaway that for 2026 and beyond, if you're preparing for the FRM part one and part two exam, make sure that what you have on your document, it matches, the, it, it matches with the details on the GARP dashboard, plus it should match the email admission ticket right we we spend a lot of time money energy on this and you know when the exam comes in and, and you're not allowed to sit it is painful i understand that so that's why i say that something which is still under our control make sure that this is not repeated going forward okay make sure that every single details if you have your last name it should be mentioned on everything so double check everything what we have it here okay moving on to the actual november 2025 exam analysis and i have to admit this lot of surprises it was not like the may 2025 or the august 2025 there was a lot of surprises if if someone was solely dependent on the most important things they studied that and then and they did not concentrate on any other things well let me tell you even unimportant topics could be tested as an example if you if you thought that okay uh ewma or maybe duration convexity is very much important and 100 percent it's going to be tested where there could be a chances that you might not be tested on that on the other hand if you feel that okay maybe greeks is not uh testable that might show up on the exam so yes there was a lot of surprise element and that the key takeaway here here is that when you prepare for the exam be it part one part two make sure that you cover almost everything right so that there's less of surprise element on the actual exam that is the very first key takeaway the second thing is that was the exam similar to the garp mock now what people suggested me that when they took the garp mock and when they appeared for the actual exam there was some sort of a difference now some students reported that garp mock was bit on the easier side than the actual exam meaning the actual exam was difficult that's again some people reported that uh, however many students said that it was similar uh, lines of the garp mock so if you 
did well in the GARP mock, you had a better chance of passing the exam. That's just one key takeaway that we have it here. Okay, moving on to the theoreticals versus the numericals. Well, let me tell you, uh, overall, I've had few candidates who reported 90% theory, right? They almost barely had any questions that required the use of a calculator or maybe calculations as such and 10% uh, numerical. But then also we had candidates who had like 65 or 60 percent on more of a conceptual side uh, wherein interpretation you know views of mental uh it, it was kind of like a challenging in in that situation and there was some calculative questions as well which was heavily you know you, it, it required a lot of time uh, calculation intensive so on and so forth so yes there was a mix of everything on uh, on, on on different people had different exam windows and so on and so forth but on an average if i still have to you know uh, take take the average of this thing i would say that again 75 to 80 percent would have been overall uh, on the theoretical side that means requires more of mental calculations rather than the actual calculation using calculator right so more of a conceptual based questions and the rest i would say that somewhere about 20 percent is on an average that's what we have been witnessing uh for the for the past many many years right so this is the overall proportion but again again if you're preparing for may 2026 okay make sure that you could see higher theoretical or maybe you could even see higher calculation so be prepared for both but this is the general uh, overall ratio that we have witnessed okay moving on to the difficulty level there was a higher difficulty level as reported by many students uh, as 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 per the feedback this has been uh, especially the november 2025 has been much difficult as compared to the may and august that's that's the general overview now going forward what do you need to do is make sure that you understand everything understand the concepts you know try to solve as many questions so that you have a better conceptual clarity that is what the key takeaway is okay and do not you know even if you feel that this is not testable do that because it could be tested on the exam so these are the key takeaway but overall if i have to summarize the difficulty level was pretty much on the moderate to the difficult side okay S maybe few candidates might have experienced a very well prepared candidates might have experienced on the you know on the medium side or bit on an easy manageable way but majority candidates reported the exam to be on the moderate to the difficult side now going going forward what should you be referring garp or schweizer well you can comfortably review or you know go to go with the schweizer notes that is good to go for both level one and level two 90 95 percent of the exam you'll be able to manage it easily right so there's going to be only few questions that is going to be a surprise element specifically taken from garp right that is something that you just have to manage it out. Otherwise, I would say that still Schweizer does the job. And for all our students, you can refer Schweizer plus the our notes that we have crafted from the GARP itself. So I have combined Schweizer plus GARP and uh, that is the notes that I've prepared. If you combine both these things, you're almost good to go. No need to refer anything else. Okay, moving on to the final thing, and that is the expected score. What is going to be the ideal expected score? See, as I said, uh, see, as per the feedback, it was difficult exam overall. Okay, in, in most of the cases, it was difficult. So I would say that the expected score has to drop a bit. So if I have to give you a range, I would say that maybe 60, 65 on the higher side you have, that is going to be a good passing percentage. And if I have to say for part two, uh, you know, anyone who's getting 50 and above, that is a safe benchmark for the part two exam. Again, we don't know this particular thing, but this is just a judgment that ideally 65, 70% is a decent benchmark. But if the exam is tough, then even 60% and above is a, is a safe passing score. Okay, so that is the key takeaways, guys. Make sure that for the 2026, if you're preparing for that, make sure that you take the GARP mock very seriously and uh, 
prepare for all the topics initially maybe 10 days before the exam you can focus on the important things the important concepts that are highly tested right but overall your preparation should not neglect or ignore certain topics that either you find difficult or maybe someone said that it's not important no it's not that at least in the initial phase you have to go through that particular thing so if you have any questions please post it in the comments below with that being said i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for your time